Hello and welcome to Game Maker Studio 2 Basics Tutorial. In this video I'm just going to show you around Game Maker Studio 2 and show you how to create your first project. So this is not a coding tutorial, this is just to show you how to get started with Game Maker Studio 2. Um, so this is it, this is the program, this is going to be the first thing that you see. You're going to see this little scrolling thing right here and uh, there's going to be some blog posts and some things might pique your interest. So you might want to check that out. Of course on the left here there's some of your recent projects that you'll find. Uh, of course getting started you can create a new project, you can open one of your projects and import a project if you're coming from a later version of Game Maker like Game Maker Studio uh, 1 or Game Maker 8. Uh, then we have Explore down here which this is good to check out. You have some demos on Game Maker Studio 2 and uh, from my understanding, you can completely edit these demos around and make them, you know, change the graphics and kind of do some cool things with those. So check those out. There's, of course, a whole tutorial section, which is useful, but you have my tutorial, so you might as well watch those. And then you have a marketplace, which will be useful later on. You can buy, and then some things are for free, but you can basically obtain different examples from other users uh, of things that were made in Game Maker, like health bars and ammo systems and movement systems and things like that. So, uh, okay, to create a project, you just click New. And now there's two different projects you can make. You can make a drag and drop, or you can make a Game Maker language pro project. Uh, just start with Game Maker language, and of course, if you're following my videos, I'm not going to teach you anything about drag and drop. It's it's just going to weigh you down in the future when you want to make more complex um, games. So just skip drag and drop. That's what I recommend to everybody, even beginners, and just go right into Game Maker language. Trust me, you'll be glad that you did. <clears throat> about everybody I know that started drag and drop, they develop really bad habits. And uh, trust me on this, you just want to start with Game Maker language. So let's go ahead and click that. And then you need to give a name for your project. So we'll just call this Basics. Of course, scrap, I already have a project named that because I tried to do this video before. Let's call it Basics 2. So you can name this whatever you want your, your, uh, your project to be called. Uh, so it could be like RPG land or whatever. Okay, so this is what you're going to be greeted with. On the left, this big blue area, this is your workspace. So any window that you open up is probably going to pop up in here. Uh, and then we have, on, this, on the right, we have a bunch of resources. So I know this looks really complicated and really complex, but trust me, it's, it's, once you get the hang of it, it's really easy. Uh, and, uh, Game Maker is a great tool, and it's very simple to use. So don't be intimidated by the user interface at all. So uh, here's some of your buttons up here. We can um, go back to the start page. We can create a new project. Of course, very basic. Uh, the, the main button you're going to want to know about here is this button right here. It's the run button. This is the button that lets you test your game. <laughs> so you're going to want to use that a lot. So in fact, we can actually go ahead and run a game. and. Uh, going to compile and there's not going to be anything it's just going to be a black screen and basically what it's running is this room right here which rooms you can think of as levels and uh, of course I'm not going to show you how all this works right now but that's good to know rooms are like levels uh, okay so let's go over these different folders and then we'll wrap up the video uh, each of these folders well basically everything here on this right side are called your resources so sprites are resources sound effects are resources your levels are all resources but there's different types of resources so the first one we have is, is sprites so these make up all the graphics in your game so this is your player your enemies your scenery everything is made up of sprites and uh, of course you uh, with your sprites, I'm sorry, with your sprites you can also make tile sets and um, we'll get more into that in later videos. Uh, we have our sound effects so all your music, all your sound effects will go into this folder and your paths, we're not going to get into that right now, uh, scripts, shaders, fonts, okay so this one's important because again text in the game you're gonna want to assign it a font uh, timelines this is useful to make like quests and well not really quests but like planned and timed events uh, uh, objects which 
Uh, well, I'll tell you about that in a moment, and then your rooms. And then you can write little notes that really you can just kind of write reminders for yourself about things. It's not that important. Uh, included files, this is kind of like advanced outside stuff. Same with extensions. You have a whole bunch of options that you can do with your game. Uh, again, all this is for later tutorials. But what you need to really know right now that's extremely important and will always be important no matter what game you make and that is sprites, that's objects, and that's rooms, which is your levels. And we'll throw sound effects in there too because those are pretty important for games. So, uh, everything else has its place, but the main things you want to know about are sprites, sound effects, objects, and rooms. Your objects basically make up most of the game world. Uh, your objects are going to be like your player, your enemies, your coins that you collect, uh, the the whatever, you know, the <laughs> elevator that you ride on, your whole game is going to ma be made up of objects. Someone said, well, I thought they were made up of sprites. Well, you assign a sprite to the object, or you assign, like, the graphic for the player, you assign that to the object, which you will also call player, and then in the object is what you script. That's what you put code into, and that's what you program, and you make that do a whole bunch of really cool things. So how do we create a resource? It's extremely complicated, I'm glad you asked. Actually, it's not. You just right-click on the thing that you want to create, and then just click Create whatever that is. So we can create a sprite, and then we have all these wonderful, wonderful options. So, of course, we can name our sprite, um, which you want to give every resource a different name. Uh, so uh, you can load in a sprite by clicking import. You can, uh, of course, there's a whole sprite editor in the game just by clicking edit sprite. And you can do a whole bunch of things in here. Of course, it opens up another tab so we can go back to our workspace or go into our image editor here. So we could draw something like this. <laughs> give him some eyeballs, give him a little smiley face. Yeah, give him some pupils, of course. And then we're going to make them the color blue. So um, this this is this is Timothy, which is going to be okay. So we'll cl we'll close our sprite editor, and we'll name this sprite SPR under slash player. So this is what does the SPR stand for? It's, it stands for sprite, and you'll understand why I'm going to do that in a minute. Because like I said, you have to give every resource a different name. So you can't have like a sprite named player and an object named player because that will mess up uh, everything. So, but you can name something like SPR under slash player, and then we can create an object, and we can name this OBJ, which stands for object, under slash player. Now, that way we can recognize and, you know, and when we code later, our code can recognize the difference between the sprite resource player and the object resource player. Does that make sense? It should. It's really not that hard to figure out. And then, okay, so we, we've created an object, and we will assign a sprite to this object, which we just click here. It says no sprite. You just click that, and then all your sprites will appear in this window, and we're just going to choose SBR under slash player. So you can see, even over here on our resource panel, it took on that sprite. Now we can place this in our level, which GameMaker automatically makes your first level for you, which is called Room Zero, which I recommend changing the name to that, uh, which you can also right-click and click, uh, where's it at? I thought you were able to just right click. Oh yeah, rename. And we can just name this RM, which stands for room under slash level one. So I'm just going to change that just because it makes me happy. Uh, so this is our level. And uh, of course, it just has a black background right now. And if you want to change the background, you can just click on this background tab. And then under color right here, just click that. And you can change it to whatever color you'd like. I'm going to talk more on backgrounds in future tutorials, so don't worry about it. Uh, this is kind of all you need to know right now. So let's just kind of change it to a nice pea yellow. Just because I do have to pee right now, so I'm going to wrap this video up. Uh, okay, and then when we want to add our player into our level, we just have to click Instances, which is another word for object for now. Uh, and then we can just go over here to our object player and drag him right into the room. <laughs> There's Timothy. And we can actually have as many Timothys as we want. We can drag them in, but uh, we can also select them. We can delete them. We can do all kinds of things. And then uh, now if we run our game, we should see 
There's Timothy in level one. <laughs> so that's uh, your Game Maker Studio 2 basics tutorial. Probably part one. I might do a part two just to tie up some loose ends. But uh, that's it. I hope this helped you. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in this video and I'll get back to you as soon as I see that. Don't forget to tickle the like button. Very important. And subscribe if you haven't already. It'd be a good opportunity to subscribe right now as I'm starting this new series on Game Maker Studio 2. I'm going to be going all the way from beginner all the way to pro at Game Maker Studio 2. So I'm going to teach you how to program in this software and all kinds of fun things. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next video.